Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What up, what up, what up, podcast party people. How you doing? How you living? You feeling good? You feeling alive? Spicy? Fresh? I'm feeling pretty spicy. I'm, pe- I'm feeling pretty fresh. My hair's not fresh. I'm, I haven't washed it for a couple days, but the rest of me is spicy. I'm in a spicy mood, goddammit. In a spicy mood. A little agitated, but you know, it's probably all good. Agitated with one of my band members, but just let that one slide. Just let that one go. Someone's on my shit list, though. I'll tell you that. I, uh,. I'm hanging out here on Twitch. I got my Twitch channel up. If you're on twitch.tv forward slash Rob Flynn, I'm doing my podcast intro. I don't really do the podcast on here because it goes on to Gas Digital. And so I got some good news in regards to that. I got some good news in regards to that. Everybody been complaining, dude, I can't find your old podcast, where are they at? And I've been complaining because I want all of my podcasts up. And Ralph Sutton, the head of Gas Digital, or one of the heads, at least the guy that I speak to, the main man, the CEO, the boss man, he has agreed to have all of my podcasts be live on YouTube. They're not going to be live on audio but they will be live on YouTube. So if you want to check them out, they're all up there right now as we speak, all of them. And if you're one of the people that you know listens to it, which meant you know, about 50% of you actually listen to the podcast, not on YouTube, but you go to Apple or you go to Spotify. If you want to, you can head over to Gas Digital right now and enter code NFR no fucking regrets, for a free seven-day trial. Download every single audio thing that you want, audio podcast of the no fucking regrets thing, and then cancel your subscription. It's that easy. Just sign up, fucking download whatever you want to, and cancel it. And then you'll have all that shit on audio, every single one. And on top of it, if you decide to stay, you get the podcast. They put it up on they put it up on Gas Digital HD video. You get it the you get it on the Wednesday instead of the Friday. So you know you could be in the know. You could be enjoying this midweek entertainment, which maybe that's more appealing to you. You know, if you sign up, and then I think you get like I don't know a dollar off subscription or something. It's pretty cheap though. Like it's not a lot. Or if you want to, you can just fucking cancel it. And you downloaded all that shit, and boom, you got fucking 106 episodes of podcasting to go through and rock on. So, yes, but good news. I was very stoked about that. It was uh, something I've been kind of bugging him about for a while, and he, you know, he came through and made it happen. And a lot of people, you know, I got to give a shout out to Jeff Gomes. Jeff Gomes is a homie of mine from way back in the day, and he was just like, dude, I'm dying. He was like, I didn't even know he listened to my podcast, and he was like, dude, I fucking love your podcast, but I can't find any of them. And then I go back. A lot of people complain about, you know, the the Jamie, the not Jamie Johnson, the Joey Jordan, J- blah, 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 Joey Jordison, not Jamie Jordanson, Joey Jordison, and the Dimebag one. You know, people listen to those ones a lot, and they, uh, you know, they go back and refresh on it, and you know, it's I think it's cool that they do that. So, uh, you know, for, for reasons like that is, is a lot of why I want them to come up. You know, people li- go back and listen to them again, you know, like they, and I, fu- I'm fucking stoked that any of you guys want to go listen to this podcast. It's an hour to two hour long conversation that you want to listen to more than once, which is awesome. So <clears throat> good news there. 
Um, let's see what else. <clears throat> I went and saw Testament and Exodus the other day at the uh, Fox Theater. They had a, I guess they were going to do a tour called. It was Testament, Exodus, and Death Angel, and uh, yeah, I guess they were going to do a tour together at one point, but then they had to cancel it. And the, but they kept the Bay Area show, sold out. It was fucking slammed. And it was like, it was crazy because I ran into people that I've never seen at a thrash show before. Like my son's old basketball coach who I knew was like an Iron Maiden metalhead. And, you know, when I say that, I'm not being derogatory towards him, but it's like he's an Iron Maiden metalhead. You know, he's not like into fucking knock loose or go zero. You know, like he's not into the new shit. He's into like older metal. And uh, I've never seen him at a show before. And I was like, holy shit. He's like, yeah, dude, my first time seeing Testament and Exodus. I was just like, oh, fuck. You know, so it was like a lot of those type of people, which was fucking awesome, man. You know, like people are getting tuned in. And, you know, even if it is, you know, a couple of decades late to the party, like welcome to the party. And it was uh, it was fun. I got to say Death Angel, man, probably the most packed I've ever seen the Fox Theater for an opening band. For It's probably the most packed I've ever seen any venue for an opening band. I mean, it was fucking slammed to the rafters. Man, they had a great show. They sounded amazing. Killer lights. Like, it was, it was fucking awesome. Like, they fucking killed it. Opened with three classic ultra-violence era songs and just, you know, killer. They set the tone. Awesome. Uh, Exodus came out. Ex- I got to give a shout-out to Zetro. Zetro was really really good you know, like really commanding like some great raps you know between songs and you know at one point he got the whole crowd to just, you know tom just tom hunting famous world famous exodus drummer survived cancer just recently you know and this is one of his first shows back and dude I mean, got the whole crowd to clap, and, you know, like, people were just, I mean, it was, like, I fucking got a little misty-eyed, man. Like, I was like, dude, like, it was so fucking cool. And Tom gives him the mic, and Tom's like, ah, you know, he didn't say much, but it was just, it was just a really, really special moment. It was fucking awesome. You know, sound was pretty rough for them. Whew, I mean, like, guitars were hard to hear, vocals were (laughs) ear-splitting. It was fucking, it was like, ow. Woo, it's loud. It's loud. But uh but yeah, they fucking killed it. They fucking rocked it. Great selection of songs, you know, did a bunch of stuff off of the new album Persona Non Grata, which you haven't heard. It's a great, great Exodus album. Um Testament came on, Testament killed it, looked great, sounded great, had, you know, killer backdrop layout and fucking you know, it was, it was very cool. It was very, very cool played like new order for song in the fucking into the set so it was all in all it was a good night for fucking thrash metal in the bay area yeah it was really cool really fun night I had a good time man saw a hell of hell of fucking people just fucking every like every fucking five feet just like what dude what's up dude what's up it's like high school reunion goodbye I, unfortunately i heard a bunch of people got uh covid which i was totally shocked because you know i mean i guess it a lot of people weren't wearing masks and I was and wasn't for some time but but good vibe all in all good vibe all in all I had uh what did we do this weekend oh my son had a cello performance Friday night I did the happy hour and then after the happy hour I went home to uh my son had a, my youngest son Wyatt had a cello performance with his uh, school and that was awesome it was really cool. He did a, uh, he had like, a, it was, so he, he does, he's in two things in his school. He's in two bands basically in his school. He's in like the, the string band and then the string orchestra band, which is another band. And then he has like a volunteer thing that he does on top of it. That's just like, it's not even extra credit. It's just extra, um, just extra. It's just, volunteering to do extra music because he's really into it and loved it. And I got to say, like, of all the things, that was really cool. Like, they had the killer, like, that choir. They had, like, it was their big Christmas thing. And it was in a big hall that was cool. And uh, I got to say, though, the thing that 
fucking knocked it out of the park was the volunteer. Dude, the volunteer thing was so fucking awesome. Like, they had, you know, because it was volunteer members of the Guys and Girls Choir. It was volunteer members of the horn section. So that's like clarinet, tuba, all that stuff. And then volunteer members of the percussion, which is like, you know, the big drums and like xylophone and click, click, clacks and stuff like that. And then also the strings. And, you know, I've seen him do the orchestra thing a couple of times, but I don't believe that I saw him do it with the horns before. Like, I don't think the horns were ever there. And man, hearing that whole thing with the horns was fucking awesome, man. Like, it sounded like a movie score. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was it was awesome. And the kids sounded really good. And, you know, they're freshmen. Or I think, I don't I think the, the grades are mixed, but he's a freshman. And, uh, yeah, it was really cool. And then we kicked, and then we went home. And my dad came out. My dad came out, and uh, he spent the night because we don't want him. It's too late. Like we, the whole thing ended at like nine. We don't want him driving. My dad got in a really serious accident driving at night already, and it's just too, you know, just can't be driving at night anymore, Dad. And uh, you know, so he just he spends the night now. And uh, we got back, and it was still pretty early, so I was like, ah, let's just have a cocktail, and Jennifer's going to have some wine, and uh, we'll watch uh, we'll watch a movie. And so my dad's like, I'll have a cocktail, and I was just like, all right, so I'm drinking, I'm pour, pour my, I pour my vodka drink, and I drink, I drink vodka and Bailey's, which, which I still don't really have a name for. I was calling it a Grayley's at one point, Goose Cream at one point, and now I just, it's just vodka and Bailey's, that's it. That, nothing, it's, that's it, just vodka and Bailey's. And, uh, and so he has one and man, he starts getting, I mean, he pours himself a pretty stiff drink. Like I was like, Whoa, dude. And I taste it. No, no ice. Like I'm just like, put some ice in that shit. Like it'll be, it'll taste better. And, uh, so we go and we sit down we start watching the big Lebowski, which I haven't seen in forever. And I remember the, it's funny because the first time I watched that movie, I don't know, I must have been in a shitty mood or something, but like I hated it. I was like, this movie fucking sucked. What the fuck? And then I saw the movie about a year later and I was like, oh my God, this is the fucking funniest shit ever. This money, this movie is so, I don't know why. I did the same thing with Fight Club. I saw Fight Club originally. I was like, this movie sucks. And then fucking, I saw it like a year later. I was like, oh my God, this is the best movie ever. Why did I think this sucks? And, uh, so that's what happened with the Big Lebowski. So I, but I hadn't seen the Big Lebowski, and I'd probably seen it three or four times since it came out. And uh, yeah, I, uh, my dad thought that shit was the funniest fuck. I mean, he was, la- dude, he was laughing his ass off, and I'm not, you know, maybe because it was like an older movie. That's what I started thinking. Like there was a lot of. It's it's got a lot of '90s references. It's got a lot of you know even '70s references. You know, Walter's always talking about Vietnam and and the dude's a hippie. You know, he can relate. He can connect to these characters and connect to these things. And that's fucking funny. It's like what the, what the fuck, Walter? The fuck has this got to do with Vietnam, Walter? The fuck? <laughs> it's so good. So stupid. It's such a stupid movie, and it's so fucking awesome. It's fucking great. So he was just cracking up, like just fucking laughing his ass off. And then, uh, yeah, we can't, we can't, we spent the night, wake up. Him and I took the dogs on a big walk, and, and then he went back home. It was cool. It was a good hang. It was good. We've been doing that. We had him spend the night for Thanksgiving because it's just, again, easier to have him spend the night. We're, you know, we're far more comfortable with him blow up the air mattress. I've got like one of those kind of fancy, you plug it in and then it blows up into the, it's a pretty sick ass bed, like a double size bed with the back thing. And you know, They're cool. They're comfortable. I fucking slept on it before. I'm like, this is a super comfortable bed. <laughs> this is a really comfortable bed. Yes, yeah, so it was good. The other night I, uh, the night one was this, the night before, was it the night before happy? It was the morning, it was between, it was the the night between Thursday and Friday morning. I don't know what was going on. 
but all night. And men, you know, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Just one of these nights, one of these nights where you just have a fucking hard on all my, I mean, I was like, what the, and it doesn't happen there. You know, like when I was in my teenage years and my 20 years, sure. Like every, I'd fucking wake up with a fucking raging hard on like every fucking morning all night. But you know, when you're up, when you're up in my, when you're a Neanderthal like me and you've reached Neanderthal age, it doesn't happen all the time. And dude, like the other night it was just fucking like five hours. I'm not even exaggerating. Just like, I'm fucking trying to fucking turn the bed and like, gee, fucking get out of the way fucking hard on <laughs> so i was just like uh, i don't know if i can finally i'm i'm like i'm awake and it's like i woke up at pretty early that morning for 5 30 in the morning which is annoying but it's just been happening to me lately so annoying and uh i wake up and i'm just laying there and i'm thinking about lyrics and i've still got this fucking hard on so i'm just kind of like you know every once in a while just kind of readjusting my hard on and and then, and then I kind of hear my wife waking up. I hear my sugar pie waking up, and I was just like, "Hmm, my sugar pie, she's awake." And then she kind of reaches over and she grabs my hand. She's like, "I can't sleep." And I was like, "Really? Hmm." I was like, "I can't sleep either." And she's like, oh. "She's like, oh, I'm fucking tired. I want to go back to sleep." And I was like, "Well, you could go back to sleep, or you know." Just to let you know, I've had this hard on for like five hours now. Should probably do something with it. She was like, "Really?" Mm. I was like, mm, "Yes." She's like, "Oh, oh all right." Like, came over and snuggled up, snuggled up to me, and she's like, mm, "Oh my gosh!" And I'm like, "Yes." Like, dude, we, I, I don't know what's good. This thing's just been here for five hours now. So I was in a really good mood. All for oh my, just the best mood all Friday after that. But I was annoyed. I was annoyed that I woke up early, but man, I was just happy that I woke up early after that. Put me in a just put me in a good mood the rest of the goddamn day. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. What else do I got here? I've got, I think I've got one other subject that I was going to talk to you guys about here. What was I going to talk about? Here we go. What do I got? Was that my last subject? Was that my last subject? Oh, I know what it is. I'm in the studio right now. I'm in the studio. In fact, we started yesterday. Zach and I were in the recording studio, finishing up the new album. Working on the new album. It's coming along right now. I'm actually, uh, they're setting up in there. They've got Naveen, uh, Copper Weiss, Entheos, Animals as Leaders, a million other bands. He is setting up drums, and he's going to be putting the, laying down some heat, laying down some heat with the drums. We, uh, yeah, it's going really good. Been really, really productive. And, uh. We're kind of getting towards the end here, man. We're getting towards the finish line. The finish line is in sight. And I haven't been able to see that say that for a long time. And Naveen, if you recall, Naveen is the dude who uh, he played on Firestorm, Arrows and Words from the Sky, My Hands Are Empty. He played on uh, Circle of the Drain. And so, uh, yeah, it's comfortable having him around. He's a local guy, you know, which makes it really helps. And uh, he's got his own band, Entheos, with his girlfriend slash uh, fiance, I believe, uh, Cheney. And they're, uh, they got a record dropping on metal blade pretty soon. Pretty, you, I think you guys will like it. It's pretty cool. Technical, but like heavy as fuck and kind of tech death. I don't know what to describe it. You'd have to ask him, but it's some good shit. I was in there when they were recording it. Listen to it. It's good stuff. So, uh, but yeah, he's going to lay down some heat, man. So we're getting towards the finish line. We're probably going to be dropping some new songs pretty soon. Pretty soon, we'll be dropping some new songs. And then the record will be dropping probably end of summer next year. we got to wait till the vinyl all lines up because the vinyl takes fucking forever now. Nine-month lead time on vinyl. Adele just shifted 130,000 copies of vinyl first week. 
dude, it's crazy. All these fucking major labels are clogging up all of the vinyl pressing plants now. So, yeah, it's been a little bit of a, it's been a challenge. But uh, we'll be dropping some, we'll be dropping some songs on, on the digital, the DSPs, digital service providers. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked on uh, my guest here, man. My guests, Peter from uh, Peter and Michael from the Halo Effect. Super nice guys. This is a great conversation. If you haven't checked out the Halo Effect, the Halo Effect will be opening for Machine Head and Amon Marth on our epic arena tour happening September and October 2022 over in Europe and the UK. So uh, they will be opening. Check it out, though. This is a brand new kind of a, I guess it's a super group, death, melodic death metal super group, you could call them. But uh, kind of a vibe of their own. But it's in flames, dudes, dark, dark tranquility dudes. This is the only song that they actually have up out right now. And it is called Shadow Minds. But uh, yeah, check this out. This shit's fucking banging. head over to their Spotify page, they've got an artist pick that looks like uh, Inspiration and Origins. If you're over there, they've got, let's see, a bunch of early death metal, Merciless, Pure Hate, Flag of Hate by Creator, Twisted Face by Sadus, Pestilence Song, Slayer Song, Sepultura, Bathory, Death, Malevolent Creation, Necrophagus, Sentenced, Carnage, Carcass. Deicide, Autopsy, Vader, yeah. Some Obituary. Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King, nice. Good shit, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Peter and Michael from the mighty The Halo Effect. Michael, Peter, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. Doing great. Yeah, I like that Rush shirt you got rocking there. I love it too. It's my favorite. <laughs> yes. Are you big Rush fans in the in the gang, right? Like you got a bar called 2112, you're wearing a Rush shirt. Like, we have a band yes. called The Halo Effect. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, so yeah. It's a, it's a running theme. That? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a rush song. Is it? Okay. I wasn't sure if that's where it came it's from. It's from the latest album, so it's it's not that deep of a cut, but still okay. an instrumental. Yeah. Nice. So that did yeah. help. You know, it had a deeper meaning too, but it, uh, it made it easier uh, when choosing a, a title for this band. Oh, right. I loved when you came up with the title and you gave us the deeper meaning and then you ended up, and of course it's rush song. And that's, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> just to seal the deal so to speak yeah <laughs> it's, cra it's crazy that uh it's crazy to think that rush will never be around again isn't it it is it is it's i'm so like happy it. i saw i saw them on the last tour oh, Ma awesome. medicine square garden uh, 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 i'm <laughs> never gonna forget that <laughs> highlight of my life maybe was that the tour where they did uh, two sets where they kind of had like early, uh, newer stuff in the first half of the set and then the second half was like all classics and they had the washing machines was, on stage? Oh, the that too. But they also had reverse uh, chronologically, reverse chronological. It was, I mean, they started from the new album and they ended with the first. So oh, they went okay. all the way back. So every, every two songs and they switched like everything. So the, in the last couple of songs, they had like amplifiers on chairs, just like they did in the gymnasium when they had their first show, stuff like that. Oh, that, wow. Oh, That's cool. Man. It was. That's really cool. <laughs> Loved it. When was the last time you saw Rush, Peter? Uh, it was a long time ago. I think it was back in 2008 or something like that. In Malmö, right? We were there. No, no yeah, you went to Malmö. I went to Stockholm. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was in Stockholm yeah. too, but yeah, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> same toy, of course. Yeah. yeah. Now that's that's the only one that I saw them actually. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah, fantastic band. I never got the chance to see them more than once, but. Oh wow! Still yeah. treasure that experience. They weren't here as much, you know. It's my obviously since you went to America to see them, but uh, you know it. Yeah, yeah, here a yeah. Seventy nine was the the first and last time before they came back in like two thousand and four or really? something like that. Yeah. Wow! So between seventy nine and two thousand and yeah, four or five, um, yeah, that absent is from from pretty really much Europe long too. Long time. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what's up with that. Like, why? That's like almost a thirty year break. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe they weren't. You no, know, the they fans not, weren't they good enough when Europe, they were here. or they just didn't tour. They didn't tour Sweden, or they didn't tour Europe. They definitely didn't tour Sweden, but they. I don't think they toured that much in in Europe either. So, oh wow, uh, that's and, interesting. Uh, and the first time I ever saw them, it's a long story, Peter. Do you want to get into it? Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually it. our we <laughs> so I we uh, <laughs> oh this this is like it is gonna it's gonna take a while but it was <laughs> our first ever American tour right so this was in two thousand and two okay yeah. and, and Dark Tranquility was supporting In Flames okay in America and we were super excited about it of course and you guys had been on tour already like for a month or so with Slayer and yeah Soulfly, like right? two two months even Slayer Soulfly two months, and, uh, yeah. down the sun or something and. We ended up, our last show was in Portland, right? Yeah, exactly. And our, and our first show together was in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So, so we were flying to San Francisco from Sweden. And, but then through a mutual Canadian power trio, Rush fan, uh, he mentioned like, hey, Rush are on tour right now, you know, in the States. And you're going there. Why don't you go to see them? I was like, how do I, how the fuck do I do that? It's 2002. I don't have a cell phone that works in America. You know, how, how is this going to work? Right. But then it turned out like, okay, but in Flames, actually, their last show is in Portland and Rush is playing Portland. And so maybe if I go to that show and then I jump onto their bus and I join their bus down to San Francisco and we start a tour, it should be fine, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was the idea. So, um, but I, I couldn't get a ticket because my um, credit card didn't work in America for some reason. So I couldn't order it ahead of time. So basically on the flight over, uh, we had a layover. Like we stopped in, in Seattle. I decided like, fuck it. I'm getting another flight. Never done this before. And I, so I took a flight to Portland, got off, jumped in a taxi, came to the venue, bought a second-hand ticket or whatever, like outside. Like um, like a scalper from a scalper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it's called. Uh, ran in, first song was playing, third row, and I was like sitting there going like, boiling my outside, like I actually made it and I could actually see them you know, right, for the first right. time in life. And then and I, so I figured, and I told, and I had actually called Peter beforehand. Mm-hmm. So I called him. He had an American phone number, right? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I called you and I said like, okay, I'm joining your bus, you know, so wait for me. And that you said like, well, we got a long uh, <laughs> drive from Portland to San Francisco. So you better be here, you know, before we leave. Oh, so nobody from leave? In Flames, nobody from In Flames goes with you to the Rush show. It's no, 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 no. They, they, had, they were still they playing. Had a separate show. Yeah. We, we had the, like the farewell party with Slayer and all that stuff as well. Right, so we were right, just... of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you still yeah. had a, an early bus call, right? To, yes, to, yes. to get to San Francisco. So you said, like, oh, be here before 11 and you should be fine. And of course, I'm sitting there, like, kind of stressed out by the end, by the encores and going, like, fuck, I got to make it. But yeah, it seems like good. And I ran out to good cab, got to the, the parking lot behind the, uh, the venue in Portland. And there were all the tour buses and I was like, fuck yeah. And it's still like quarter to 11 or, you know, half past, half past 10 or something like that. It should be fine. I knock on every tour bus I can find. And it's like, where's the inflames bus? Uh, just here. But no. And every other tour bus is like, yeah, they, they, no, they left. And I was like, okay, uh, I have no phone to call anyone. <laughs> Some, someone's uh, tour manager started calling their bus, but it didn't work. No one picked up. I'm like, Whew. Okay, how, how the fuck do I do this? Found payphone, you know, in a, in a gas station. It was super sh- weird neighborhood too. It was tons of crackheads. And- yeah, Portland can be gnarly. Like, yeah, it's got, some, it's got some gnarly little weird hippie, <laughs> and junky areas where you're like, yeah, oh, this is uh, my, it's, it's this called is my the first Roseland, I think, right? Yeah, right. the Ro- yeah, Ro- the Roseland. Yeah, so that's it's yeah. a very interesting neighborhood. Depending oh, on Slayers which playing the Roseland. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. a small room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And this was my first hours in America ever mm-hmm. for me. Right. <laughs> so, Just so, right uh, off the plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, and I, I tried to call and I called like all the numbers I had written down on my cell phone that I didn't work, but I could dial in. Peter didn't answer. I got to his uh, uh, answering machine. <laughs> this is I got to cool. this is one of the things like you know I still have a bad conscience of this. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I think I don't remember why. I think I forgot or something like that. Where I was yeah. just pissed drunk or something after doing. Yeah, and then I called Anders. I called Björn. Something. I called everyone that I had a phone number yeah. to, and no one answered. And I was like, oh fuck, God, how do I don't get out of this. Um, eventually, some some fans like came up to me. It's like, aren't you that guy from that Swedish band? And it's like, oh, well, yeah. And I told him like my predicament <laughs> and they said, well, I can drive, we can drive you to the airport. And I was like, oh, awesome. And um, then it was just it was my deal detail of like, do I have enough money to get a plane ticket? I need to call my dad. You know, my dad works at, at, my, in a, at a bank and he takes care of my like, money and all that stuff. So had to check with him so that I could actually buy a plane ticket. And this was in the middle of the night, of course. No one spoke English. There was no payphone that you could work. So you had to call one of those kind of collect numbers. To, oh, right, to, right. And I had to call collect to my friends. To yeah. yeah, collect calls. And, and it's like, and of course, I don't remember any numbers. My phone had died. And I was like, how, how, right. how do you? Who remembers numbers now, right? No, it doesn't work. You know, And I, I only remember one number to one of my friends. And I called him collect. And it was like, you have a collect call from uh, blah, 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 blah in, in America. And he goes like, fuck no. Because he, he was thinking like, oh, you're just drunk. And you want, you want to talk to someone <laughs> young up. Thank you very much. Good friend of mine. <laughs> and I did that seven times and he still hung up on me. So uh, oh, man. eventually I remember another number, got the money, got on the flight. And I was like, how do I get to whatever venue we were playing? We were playing the, do you remember? Slim, Slims. Slims. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Slims. Yeah. Slims. Okay. Yeah. Um, See, that, that course, I remember. That's pretty, that's pretty close to the airport. I, I forgot my good friend, but I remember the venue name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, well, on the last but, night but, of a Slayer tour, you're probably doing hella shots of Jägermeister with Carrie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're this, not remembering this was anything. Back in- this was back in the rump, rumple mid days as well. So oh, I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Must yeah. have been. If you even remember walking onto the, your bus that night, you know, good for you. <laughs> yeah. And of course, like I was super worried because the the guys in the in my band they were pissed at me for leaving. They were like, "Okay, you're gonna miss the first show or the first couple of shows. You're gonna get lost somewhere in America. You're never gonna find us. You're gonna be late." And I was like, "No, oh, don't worry about me. I'll be fine." But of course, on, on the flight down, a, a guy on the plane had a rush shirt, and I was like. Hey, dude. And he was like, oh, man, I'll drive you to the venue. No worries. Like, right took on. me home for dinner and met his family. It was oh, fucking wow. awesome. And then took me to the venue. So I was, like, fast asleep on the couch and sleeping back in the backstage room when the other guys arrived. I was like, hey, man. Oh, you got there, so you was, got there ahead of everybody. Oh, man. hell yeah. Yeah, a couple of hours. It was fantastic. <laughs> so it was a good way to start an American tour with the best band ever. That is a, that is a pretty good way to start. I mean, yeah. that's quite the adventure for your first time in America. Yeah, it's been downhill ever since but yeah <laughs> now he's been awesome so it was I think good, I good saw way to Dark start. tranquility it uh i think you guys played the pound in san francisco and i want to say oh, i yeah. saw you guys there yeah yeah we played there I a couple of times i can't remember who was i want to say evergrey maybe i could be remembering this wrong though. Mm, no never evergrey but um is that the outdoor venue it was it had an outdoor venue, but it was... We never played that one. Yeah, it was we primarily played an indoors. indoor club. And then for, yeah. for like a couple of months, it was outdoors, but it was mostly yeah. just... A, a, it was just the awesome rock dive bar of San Francisco. You know, like... It was oh, gorgeous. Yeah. I loved it. Black, you know, walls painted black, just every great beer and booze you can... You know, that's perfect yeah. all you want, right? Yeah. Love yeah. that. I remember, I remember when we played that, we went to the Skywalker Ranch, uh, of course, as you do. When you oh, yeah. San Francisco, if you're from Sweden. Oh, and, you, must have uh, been, you went with Neil probably, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I went, yeah. went a couple of times. And, and this one time, there was so much traffic jam. So I, th- I remember just walking in like, literally like half an hour before set was supposed. And everybody was super worried. But right. usually it was worth it. It's, it's like, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's way up there. Yeah. It, you, th- yeah. you think it's pretty close. You're like, oh, yeah, it's just like... 22 but miles the side of the or whatever, bridge. but it's fucking northern you, you California. Gotta, you got to remember that it's like we're from Gothenburg, which is you can walk like around the city basically, and then you come to San Francisco and you kind of new to the country and obviously to the, the city, and uh, you don't really think about how big it is. Yeah, so, like 22, yeah, miles. Fine, just, 22 yeah. miles can be two and a half hours in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
it's like me and Peter live pretty far from each other, but I'm pretty sure that if I start walking in your direction, Peter, and you start walking in mine right now, in 15 minutes, we'll have a ice cold San Miguel at uh, the Red Lion, right? Yeah, right. So that's yeah, how close we are. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I live, four, I live 14 miles from my house, and sometimes it'll take me an hour and 15 minutes to drive back there. <laughs> like, it's just fucking, you know, that's just here. Driving yeah. here is, is silly, and we just walk. It, yeah, shout yes. out to Neil. Ne- Neil's taking a lot of band dudes up to Skywalker Ranch. It's a fucking oh, yeah. really cool trip. It's a really it, awesome trip. It is. As a, I mean, I'm assuming you guys are both Star Wars nerds. Of course. Hey, yes. I don't know if you can see my background. You see that thing up there in the in the corner? That's my uh, Star Wars Kenner collection. Part of it. original ones. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. Original. Awesome. I got to turn this a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I got some some stuff down here. It's uh, it's this is this is a nerd heaven. I love yeah. it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah, I still got some of my. I, I got the Star Wars beers right here. Star Actually, Wars beers. Yeah, I didn't know I about it. that. No, it's uh, it's this. I gotta show you. This is fantastic. I cried a little bit when yeah. I tried it the other day. What it's, kind of beer is it? There's a different one. This is a this is an, uh, an IPA. Yeah, then there's a Stormtrooper IPA. Yeah, there's a pale ale. There's a there's a, a stout, and there's a hazy. Hazy IPA. Yeah, New New England style kind of. Then there's a few other ones, but I think there's only four available in Sweden right now. Did they so, have yeah. a Darth Vader stout? Oh, they should. They should, right? Dark Side <laughs> of the Force, something like yeah. that. I mean, it's, 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 it writes itself. Is that Shadow, it? Shadow stout. Yeah, Shadow, Shadow stout. Oh, but it was a, uh, it's a stormtrooper, though. Why isn't it va- what? No oh, Vader? That's a big fail right there, but still. That is. But but the brewery's called like Stormtroopers or something like that, right? Yeah, stormtrooper ales or something like that, and yeah. it's it's legit. The, the, somehow they got the license for this to doing wow. this. Uh, I don't know. But it's British, right? It's like an it's English. British. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. stormtrooper. I still haven't tried it. Yeah, stormtrooper beer. No, it's great. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually it's actually pretty good. Is it? Yeah, yeah. and that's coming from a guy who owns a brewery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised because <laughs> like uh, yeah, you know, for that reason, I guess when I tried it, I was a little bit skeptical. As as cool as as the labels still are, right? The beer, but it was actually pretty decent. That's awesome. Yeah. Is is your brewery your favorite beer? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, you can't say anything <laughs> bad about it. Right? M- it's, it's kind of like saying like the ro- local restaurant is the best, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twenty one twelve, the best restaurant. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. I gotta, I gotta explain though because it's not me being like a, a jackass now. It's more like a, we brew the beers that we like to drink ourselves, right. and that's yeah. it's, 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 it's that. You know, I think yeah. Yeah, it's Daniel, the drummer Daniel, who, yep. who brews yep. all the beer together with another guy, and and he does it really, really well. So I'm, I, I drink it and I taste it and I, you know, approve. and I've drank drank them all many, many times, and I, yes, I approve. Have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I love them. <laughs> I, they're really good. That's love awesome. It. Is it IPAs? Is it what is it like Pilsners? Oh, or? Yeah, everything. We do Pilsners oh, and lagers and IPAs and stouts and porters and hazies and uh, you know everything. That's sours. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We actually yeah. we actually got one sour over to America through uh, Notfest. They're doing this uh, Notfest beer pit. Oh yeah, that, that they're doing. So we actually got our uh, raspberry uh, passion fruit sour beer uh, oh, cool. available in uh, through not first beer which is cool wow. which is like the first we we aim to get more and more over but i mean it's it's no point in uh, shipping over ipas and stuff like that because they they won't be as fresh when they get over but sours and pilsners and stouts and stuff so that's what we're going to start hopefully we're going to do like a pilsner within the next year oh right on what do you mean what do you mean it's through not fest what is you're like they're selling it at the not fest show or? yeah no at the uh, not fest beer pits it's called uh, they do like a, a bundle every month with uh, okay. four or five different breweries uh, wow. that they consider From through the website or through this yeah through the vent through the web, through the, through oh, the okay website. gotcha okay gotcha yeah so it's yeah just check out the Knotsfest Instagram page and there's a, like a I think it's their official page otherwise it's Knotsfest Beer Pit or something like that okay I, I should be able to look this up but yeah so that's pretty cool that's the first time we actually got our beers over to America. That is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's through, through, through the official one. Awesome. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Congrats on that. That's a pretty big deal. Thank you. Yeah. That's. A, that's a, I mean, that's a big. Good. I mean, that's got to be like a pretty big goal of any brewery to get you know, especially overseas, to get their beer into America. You know, and a well, challenge. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, America is where we, uh, just discovered like craft beer to begin with. You know, uh, especially yeah. Daniel, who who was first. He was 
way before me, but uh, taking us out to different breweries and doing brewery tours and tap rooms. And you guys were way before Sweden. So, you know, in order for us to actually get a beer over there, it's, uh, it's you know, life goals. Yeah. Awesome, man. Congrats. Thank you. And congrats on, uh, on congrats on the halo effect, man. You know, like you Thank guys, you, very much. you guys have got the buzz, dude. Like <laughs> people are talking, like they're just like, Oh my God, the Kings of death, melodic death metal are back. Like it's fucking, you know, people are excited, <laughs> really excited. You know, congratulations. That's rad. Thank it's you. really cool to see yeah. the, um, yeah, the response has been crazy. It's really, really cool to see that people are really digging it. And yeah, we had kind of, you know, we, we expected people to, like it but this was kind of beyond our wildest dreams i think i mean the comments in youtube for shadow minds video are yeah. just gushing and gl you know glowing everybody's uh. just like holy fuck like very very uh, overwhelmingly it, positive response yeah for us as well very overwhelming is a great word because like uh. michael said we obviously we you know we like it and we hoped for for it but being a modest swede you never really expect something no. I guess, you know, so when people actually started, you know, posting these comments and showing us this, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. The response has been amazing. So I can't wait to share more music and to actually start, yeah, we'll go on tour with you guys, you know, and it's, it's going to be a, a great year. Yeah. And again, I mean, we're off to a good start, but it can only go downhill from here. I mean, that's the Swedish way of thinking about things. Yeah. <laughs> well, after being in a band for all these years, you're kind of like, yeah, like wait till yeah. the fuck it's on. No, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be great. You know, like I, yeah. I think the buzz is there, and you know, yeah. you've got some. I'm sure you've got some high energy songs going, and great first choice yeah. though. Really strong first choice. You know, like it was the first song that we wrote too, like oh, the, really? that we actually finished that we felt like, yeah, yeah, this this feels good. Like we're on on, on the right track here. There's like, something about that, right? Like there's something yeah. about that first energy, that first thing that you complete. It kind of, I don't want to say it sets the tone because it can go elsewhere, but it like, but it sets, sets the mood the and the yeah. yeah, the bar. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I think I think so. And we were like, yeah, this this really really works. Like, yeah, let's keep working on it because yeah, this is actually I guess, good yeah <laughs> and, I, and i guess we didn't really know what to do at first like the, we didn't really have a game plan it was not like oh this is exactly what we're going to sound like or this no. is the, the idea of the band or anything like that it was just like let's get together play to our strengths so to speak and then make music that we love yeah just very simple straightforward no expectations no um you know um yeah, we didn't have any baggage, you know, you can just like start off fresh, right. basically. Yeah, you don't have any career that you have to live up to or no. a previous song that you need to best or, you know. No. And, I th and I think that's something actually that we had to remind ourselves a little bit because like, especially we were talking uh, before and like you said, Michael, also that, that we just, yeah, we kind of stopped ourselves. Like we don't really have a sound. Let's just see where this plays out, you know. Yeah. You sing a certain way, uh, Daniel plays a certain way, Nicholas and Jesper plays a certain way, and me too. And, yeah. oh. and whatever comes out will be very natural, whatever type of music we write can, you know? Yeah. I think that that's, uh, I think that that is a great way to approach it too. I, I know I've been, there's been times when like, you know, me and the guys would sit down and talk like, oh, we should try this direction or we should go this direction. And like, mm. it never even works out. <laughs> you know, like, no. It's yeah. just talk and you're like, you're setting yourself you up for failure. You just go where the fuck you go. You know, like, yeah. you know, uh. you can, you can try and direct it, but like, you know, like, music has a way of just taking you where it, it's like, I often look at it like you're getting led by music. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not controlling where the music's going. Like you're just getting led, and it's just taking you wherever it wants you to go. You get a certain I feeling, think. and I think that's how it works. Especially in the beginning, like what the the songs that Nicholas was writing in the studio it was like. You there was a vibe to it. There was like a feeling, and and I so when I heard it, I was like, okay, I know exactly what to do here. Like this is so natural. Like this feels like an instant song. It took me a, a day or a couple of hours just to write lyrics or at least like vocal lines for it and i was like yeah, this is it this is natural even though we've never written stuff together before it was just like very much uh, like in the yeah kind of like in the dna of, of, yeah, of awesome. us from, as old friends you know yeah hey everyone let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor if you did not know machine head owns and operates 10 ton trading company the official merchandise company for 
the band. We make the designs, we source out all of the materials, get our friends and local businesses to print it all up. It is fulfilled by us. Everything is 100% DIY. So if you're buying from Machine Head, you're, that money is going directly to us. It's not going to some big corporate merchandise company who's taken a gigantic cut of it. No, this is going right to us. And it helps support everything we do and has certainly been you know, amazing during the pandemic. So for all the people that have been loyal subscribers here on No Fucking Regrets, if you head over to 10tontradingco.com right now and enter the code no fucking IN regrets, you'll get 15% off. That's no fucking regrets for 15% off of the entire store. So head over there, check it out one more time. No fucking regrets for 15% off store wide. And that's for being a loyal subscriber and listener here to the podcast. Anyway, let's get back to the show. I mean, you guys have known each other for a long time too. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know if that means that there's a necessarily a chemistry, but you've toured together. You know, you sang on the first in flames record, even yeah. if you weren't in the band, you know, yeah. like there's there's something that you're yeah, right. Of course, and, and 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 what attracted me was that okay, first like cool to to do something together with Nicholas. We never worked together before, and I love him, and we we have a lot of like favorite bands that we love together, and we always awesome. talk about records. It. Yeah, we always talk about records and music and shows and tours and all that stuff. And um, so when he said like, oh, let's we should do something sometime, you know, and. You always, you always say that, you know, you go like, oh yeah, it would be fantastic, but who has the time? Suddenly we did have the time, <laughs> you know, and, and it made sense. And, um, and then when, when he said like, well, I'm, I'm thinking about like Peter and Daniel as well. It's like, what? Are they going to play together again? Like that, I got to hear that. I got to be part of that. You know, it's, um, it's a must. So um, it was just only natural and, and kind of cool that of course we've been, with friends for all this time, but we rarely get to see each other sometimes because everybody's on tour, <laughs> you know, constantly. Right. So, um, so this was, for me, it was like a great opportunity to, to do something else and also to work with some of my oldest friends. And I mean, uh, the first D Dr. Willie show we ever did was, uh, with Nicholas's or original band sarcasm. So okay. back in the day, and this was in 90, I think. So, uh, nice. yeah, so we go back. <laughs> right. That's killer. I mean, it's so cool. I mean, also what was so um, interesting to hear now that we're starting to talk mm -hmm. to other people is that we have different uh, ideas of how this whole band started. And it, <laughs> yeah, turned, yeah. and it turns out that Nicholas kind of planted a seed here and there, you know, with all of us. Right. And I was then, just thinking know, that, like, Nicholas yeah. kind of like got it off the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, because he, he called me up, it's like, can I, can I take a meeting with you and Danny at the brewery? It's like, yeah, sure. And explain the whole thing. It's like, that would be fun. And then, you know, who would want to sing? Well, Michael, of course, we said. And then I called Michael and, he, and he's like, yeah, this sounds great. And then turns out he already heard about it from Nick. So it, it's, it's a very smart, you know. <laughs> Fucking awesome. five steps like ahead, you guys. Excellent scheme, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's killer, though. That's great. Yeah. So when you guys start writing, are you guys... Are you emailing, you know, demos around or riffs or are you, do you get together and jam and start like putting it together? It, it started with Nicholas having some ideas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, uh, you know, written ideas. Some were songs, some were just riffs that he placed in order, like six riffs that we made a song. And, so, and then, then I think you sang on some of those ideas and we got together in, in my place, not here yeah. in my where my, my wife took over my studio and made a, yeah. a gym there. So I'm in the basement now, but uh, that's where we sat the first time. And uh, and then we, we looked into some ideas here and there. Uh, yeah. uh, Nicholas is very, he's like the, the riff maestro here, but he's also very, very good in like getting riffs out of everybody. Uh, he asked me for some ideas, which was really yeah. cool. I could show him some stuff and he like took some ideas that he was really, this is, you know, I get a vibe from this one. And then we made a song out of that. And then he, hmm. then as this progressed, we moved on to the studio. And there, I guess, we all contributed it with ideas to a lot of already created songs. And he came up with some new ideas in the studio as well. 
Mm. But I mean, the the definite riff master is Niklas, and then Jesper came in with with his uh, riffs and ideas as well. And Daniel started arranging, and you know, it was you know felt so good to do something mutual. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's killer. It's good to see Jesper doing something too. I you know, yeah, yeah. Hadn't he'd been kind of off the at least off my radar for a while. I don't know if he was yeah. doing stuff, but no, it was, it was so it was, great. Uh, yeah, just seeing him like you know come to the studio and just like start working on something like we're working on like a mid section of a song and he just was like I think I have an idea and then he it will get to work and immediately everything that he just comes up with is fucking gold. It's just a matter of like it's like how do we fit it into the song and just he just goes and it, he has such a natural kind of instinct for for melody and for rhythm and uh, it's super cool and I you know and I haven't seen that in forever you know ever since. Yeah, Lunar's Train, <laughs> when we, we worked together last. So it was um, amazing to see that. And um, I think like he and Nicholas really worked well together, like bouncing off ideas and trying things out. And Did Nicholas and... replace Jesper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah, so they, they never yeah. did they, they never played together in In Flames? No, no, no they crazy. never did. <laughs> so <laughs> when, Jesper crazy. Le- when Jesper left for, for going home uh, uh, for personal reasons, yeah. you know, a long time ago, then... He had to kind of get his, his he was having some yeah. struggles, right? Yeah. 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 And then we called Nicholas to come in and, and help out. And then Nicholas ended up staying in the band, you know, so, but they were always friends and they were friends before any of us were friends because the part of town that they're from. Uh, so mm-hmm. this was as it's natural somehow, you know, again, Gothenburg is very small. Right. Everybody yeah. knows everybody and it's just super easy to work together. Yeah. Way, yeah. You know, it's just a phone call away and, you know, and you, basically whoever here and we can just do something fun together so many metal musicians in gothenburg yeah <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy like that you know i've been i mean i've hung out there but i i think i hung out with you at the bar that one time and i stayed there for like almost a week and it was yeah so many fucking metal like just everybody's a metal musician that's crazy it's awesome you know well it's, it's a small it's a city and you know yeah. it's like when we grew up it was either uh play hockey football uh or becoming a musician Right, you know, and that's what kind basically of. everybody did, you know. And then some people went off, you know, went, went off the grid after a while. Oh, yeah. something happened. Sorry, uh, but it's um, you're still here. Know. Yeah, okay. okay. It's my computer. You're you're not here. That's cool. okay. <laughs> no, <we're... laughs> no, but it is crazy. Of course, yeah. It's a, a lot of musicians, but and are. and it's strange, and I still love it, but they're people come here in the summertime, like from all over from Germany, Spain and Italy and stuff like that, just for a, like a metal vacation. And right. They just go like, where are all the metal musicians? Yeah. Like <laughs> searching on street corners and, and like going like, where's the ne- re- nearest rock club, you know? And they sit right. in the corner and they go like, wow, and they start drinking. And after five beers, they go like, can I sign, can you sign everything I own? You know, that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, pretty sweet. Sweet. Yeah. it's funny, I was there in the, I was gonna say I wasn't there in July. And yeah. it was, I mean, the weather was nice. It would kind of, it was kind of rainy, but like it was still warm and it was just, it was a great, yeah. I had, I, dude, it was fucking awesome. Like I, it was some really, we had just finished, we were, we were just finished a tour and I was getting ready to go on a press tour for the album Bloodstone mm-hmm. and Diamonds. And I had oh, yeah. one, and I had one song to finish and I had like, I, it was just like this kind of, it was a trippy piece called uh, Damage Inside. It was like this kind of depressing piano song with nothing <laughs> really else. And I was just like, if I'm going to write the lyrics to this song, like it's going to be in this city. Like I, I'd wake up every day. I had this artist loft in the hotel and I'd wake up every day to the sound of, you know, the church or the, you know, the bell chiming and, you know, I'm looking out, it's raining, but it's sunny and like the gold rooftops. And I was like, this is fucking. So I, I saved it till the day that I had to sing the song. And I was like, I'm going to write the lyric. I went out just raging, partying with everybody, hanging out with Charlie and fucking, you know, you, yeah, yeah. 21, 12, a bunch of times. And, and, uh, I, on my way walking to the studio, I just wrote I just wrote down the lyrics like in my phone. Like nice. I just started in the elevator and I just walked whatever the half a mile to the studio, and then I just walked into the vocal booth and sang it. And like literally, like my second or third take was just what it ended up being. And I was, nice. I was like, this is a pretty special town, you know? Like yeah. I, I can get this kind of a. <laughs> and that was things. studio top floor, which is located on the bottom floor, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Stupid, but 
cool yeah. studio. And twenty one twelve. Oh my god, I'd be so I'd be so hungover, and then I'd go to twenty one twelve and have one of your burgers, and I'd be like, oh my god, this burger is so fucking good. I'm set. Like I'm ready to do this again. Best hangover cure there is. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What's uh? When are you guys dropping a new song soon? You, this song's been out for a, a month or so, probably. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. What is it? Three weeks. Uh, yeah. Like oh, is that. that it? Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we spoke about this a couple of days ago, and uh, I think uh, in January we're supposed yeah. to. Yeah, uh, mid January. Mid January, yeah. Early to mid January, I think. Yeah, uh, we haven't set the date yet, but yeah, it's it's another video, single, very cool. cool. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Do you guys have? Like, tell me what the rest of the record's like. Like, is it thrashy? <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Is it melodic? It's a good I mean, mix. Obviously, it's melodic, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a good mix of everything. It's, yeah, it's very melodic, but it's also very. There's some slower songs or more I don't I don't want to say gothic but very no but it's groovier like, for sure yeah groovier yeah uh, mm-hmm. and then there's a bunch of faster songs yeah a lot of uh, very I don't know how to describe it without giving it away but very rhythmic based songs uh, yeah. a little bit more modern sounding maybe but still I don't know it's it's that's that's again back to <laughs> when we wrote the songs none of us really thought about how how which style it is but I kind of when when the, the gents from uh, Nuclear Blast went through the whole songs, he kind of described them, and that's pretty much what I'm using now. You know, uh, it's it's a good mix. I mean, it's a boring yeah. answer, but that's that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. Kill it. What, but it was hard. Does it was hard. Minds open the record. It does, or okay. does it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, that's his suggestion. <laughs> that's Jens's suggestion. And, uh, yeah, we haven't. I mean, that's fine for us. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking banger. Starts yeah. well. No, it's a, it's it's a good mix. I mean, it's um it's ten songs on the album, and um yeah, it goes places. One of my favorite songs is is one of Jesper's, and it's super fast, and it it has string a little string intro, and then uh, a super special guest on there. I'm, I'm not allowed to uh, talk about yet, but I, I almost <laughs> did. Uh, but it's uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 gonna be super cool. Like it's um it was fun to put together because we recorded. Um, like we did like two demo sessions, uh, three songs each, and songs were all over the place. We didn't really know, so we consulted some of our friends who kind of sat sat with us and listened to it. And it's like, how do you feel about this? Like, what's the best songs? What should we focus on? Like, where should we go? That kind of thing. Like the whole band sat down with some of your friends and just yeah. like played it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. And you know, friends who are also journalists and or super music geeks. You know. Right. Right. Uh, who, who we knew, was it, was it like... friends or was it other friends. bands? No, friends. Okay, so it wasn't <laughs> like you didn't sit down with In Flames. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be weird, right? Like, like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, so, so, but it, and that kind of you gave us one like of a... Martin Carlson? Did you sit down with Martin Carlson and ask him? Uh, no. but, but two of his colleagues, so yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah, don't, I guess... don't sit down with Martin. He's the one some, who, some like, he, he he's the one who gave St. Anger a 10 out of 10. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's going to hear that's that it. for the rest of his <laughs> life, that's for sure. He'll never live that down, ever. <laughs> he, he lives in Spain now, so it's maybe that oh, he, okay, he, 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 he moved away from uh, from all this critique of his yeah, no, no. no but he's good too but he's yeah no he wasn't there but he, he would have loved to i think yeah he's awesome. <laughs> i love him he's fucking hilarious yeah anyway, so that's cool that's cool though like i mean you yeah get some great I mean, it's feedback. fun to do that to, to get some feedback you know because at that point no one had heard anything and we were just like working in a vacuum and you're, you know? there are our shows ha- like there's not really a way for you guys to play these songs in front of an audience at the moment because of the no pandemic. no yeah. Right. No. Well, because of that, and also that we've never rehearsed. <laughs> so, no, we never. <laughs> no, we still we've never haven't been in a room band. together to play. <laughs> okay, gotcha. We're gonna we're gonna try that soon. I mean, it yeah. just seems yeah. to be a good thing to do. But the the we, music we video is probably the first time that you're all jamming like as a band. Well, right? We were laughing yeah. about that. This is as close <laughs> as we've gotten to a show like uh, to rehearse. Uh, it's crazy. Wow. All right. Good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different, but yeah. yeah but they they got together also to choose like. Uh, how they would, uh, which single they would uh, choose first and stuff like that. It was because we were so in it. You know, it's yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. be ob- objective when you you're right. like have your nose yeah. and everything. So. No, that was smart, man. That's smart. You know, yeah. you gotta get, it's good to get some outside feedback and just, 
I, I, I tell you, man, there's been so many times when I just played a song for a friend and like just watching my friend, I was like, I'm going to change this part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah This yeah. is too long or, you know, yeah. fucking this is not working or whatever, you know, like it's, it's good to get that feedback. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you actually, I mean, I, I feel like you, you try to, you, you become good at listening vicariously through someone else's ears, so to speak. Like you, it's like, how, how would I listen if I was not in here, you know, if I didn't do this and, um, that really helps, I think. And as you say, like, yeah, maybe this part needs to come out or, oh, this is not working, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, just by, like you said, just by watching somebody listening to your songs. Yeah. You gotta yeah. know, oh, okay. Yeah, or sometimes I, I, I'll be like, sometimes I think a song's good and then I'll play it for somebody and be like, dude, this song's amazing. I'm like, really? Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, let me think about this some more, okay? I didn't... You know, but I think like what we were looking for is, is that some of the guys were like, oh, hmm, I could go for a beer right about now. And then it's like, yeah, that's the feeling we want you to have, you know, when you listen to this. Right, right. Uh-huh. Awesome. No, that's I'm excited for you guys, man. That's pretty cool stuff. You know, we're, you haven't rehearsed yet. No, is, hell no. Is there any plans <laughs> for it? Why, why haven't you rehearsed now? You got a record done. Like, you got to start rehearsing now. Well, I, I guess yeah. this is just because we, we started this whole thing up from a different angle you know we just sat down yeah. and played each other ideas and then then we had access to a studio where we could actually record the the demos proper and ended up doing the whole album in that studio so right. I, I, that's that's why you know yeah it's um and also a lot of times me personally rehearsing too much can destroy an idea for me you know if you play it too much i really like just recording it and then leaning back and feeling it otherwise right. you might overwork it a little bit yeah that is kind of like, it is a modern way of doing things, you know, like as opposed yeah. to how bands used to do it. You know, like yeah. I find that we do that, we, you know, for the last 10 or 15 years, we've done that more and more, like finished songs in the studio or even written songs in the studio, finished yeah. it. And then now you got to learn how to play it. <laughs> like when you yeah. start oh, yeah. thing for the tour or whatever. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's cool though. What, um, so w- what's the plan for like a live, are, are, is there sh- live shows happening in, uh, Gothenburg now like can people yeah. play yeah. like yeah yeah everything is pretty much open like we, we're gonna get yeah you need like a vaccine pass from tomorrow I think tomorrow, uh, tomorrow yeah yeah in order to to get into a venue uh, that is above more than 100 people but it's it, as I've been to shows I've been to many okay. shows it's been fantastic like I, I've been fucking ecstatic right it's, it's been so cool and is uh, it is it uh mostly Swedish bands touring right now or is it international bands it's international bands, uh, okay. definitely. It's everything, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but it, I mean, every, so much has been canceled. But the few that I have played are actually, actually working. So I, I saw like, what's it like? Steve Hackend was here. I, we yeah. saw like Front Two Four Two. I saw, what did I saw oh, Evergrey saying that they are from here. Cool. I went to uh, I went to the Hardcore Superstar and actually made my way to the front and like really you know marshall. Yeah. It was nice. it's great. I haven't I haven't done that in years. Nice. I'm usually the guy in the back next to the bar looking, you know, right. having a beer. Like, you need and to blow, like you need to blow off like, some ah, steam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I took my, uh, it is great, right? Like it's fucking fun to go up front and headbang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but one, th- one interesting thing that I discovered, I- I've noticed that on a couple of shows last year, but it's like, as I was like moving my way through the audience, trying to make my way to the, f- to the front, people were like knocking on my door. Excuse me. This is my spot. What? Like, yeah. Say what? <laughs> this, this is it's like, like what? <laughs> this is this is a show. You know, yeah. you don't have a spot. It's like you're standing up, and it's like, no, I was standing here. Yeah, it's, a, it's that person who has okay. forgotten what it was like to to be at a show, like yeah. just because yeah. he's been home for two years. Right. But we were just decided, I looked at the friends, and we were just laughing. It's like, okay. <laughs> 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 it was, it was I, I, weird. I, I never, you know, it's, yeah, things have changed. That, Times are changing. Do you think that you went up front, though, because the pandemic and you've been locked up and you, this is like you're finally like, I need to just blow off some steam yeah, and fucking. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I started up, this was at Pustavik. I, I know you played that venue when you did the, I think it was the last Gotham show you did. When you did the Rock uh, Candy or something it's called? No, the, the uh, An Evening With. You did that, right? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 That was supposed to be so, so we, we uh, started up uh, up at the balcony, went down to the bar again, you know, went to the corner a little bit, had a beer, and I was like, fuck it. And then we just made our way to the front. It was, it was amazing. And yeah. then I just really, like you said, I realized I, I needed this. Yeah. yeah. Scream and sweat and just, you know, 
do it. It was amazing. It, it, I tell you what, I I was I was much like you, like not going to. You know, if I go to a show, I would kick it in the back and, you know, just hang. And, you know, I don't want to f- yeah. for no, not because I'm like too stuck up to go to the. No, same here. I don't want to get fucking hurt. I don't want to have to take fucking selfies with everybody. You know, like it turns into yeah. like that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, System of a Down and Corn came through uh, about a, about a month ago. And my son, both my kids really love both those bands. And their best friend is a gigantic gigantic corn fan like he's you know they're 17 you know this is they've never seen corn or system of a down and it's at the at the arena so we go there and i'm I'm hanging out and you know we're in the vip little raised area behind the soundboard and i'm like this is like this is not what your first fucking corn system of a down (laughs) get in there you realize how like this is not what everybody else is experiencing right like you understand this like and i was like you know what i was like i talked to brayden because i knew if i could get brayden was their friend if i could get him I'd get my kids. So I'm like, Brady, yeah. let's go in the circle pit and fucking mosh. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, okay. And I'm like, so I was like, so I go up and I was like, I grab my two sons and I'm like, Braden's going into the circle pit. Come on with us. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, we're going. Come on. They're like, okay. <laughs> my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm taking the kids in the pit. Let's go. We go into the pit. And this is like, the, you know, it's, it's, this is a fucking arena show. So the pit's fucking big, you know, like it's a big wow. circle pit. Yeah. But we got up there and dude, I got to say it was on so many levels. It was such an amazing experience you know like a it was amazing just because it's my first circle pit in fucking you know a decade which was rad and i'm sweating and i'm fucking screaming i'm like fuck i needed this but just watching my kids go into the pit for their first time and like the thrill of getting like not you know i got my my youngest is 14 and he's like he's a little smaller than everybody else so i'm like kind of protecting him and running around and like pushing big dudes off he's like god this is crazy and it was just it was so fucking it was amazing like i can't even tell you like maybe it was the fact that you know the pandemic had kept this away from us for so long and maybe it was just you know because it was the first time with you know my teenage sons and it was but man i was like now I, go, now, I go in the now I want to go in the pit. Now I want to go up front to shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's awesome. All good, man. What a, what a great experience. Great first experience. Hardcore superstar, too. They're great, man. I love those guys. Uh, me, too. Fantastic. Fucking awesome band. Super cool. Yeah. Just fucking just cool. You know, like just yeah. fucking. You look at the. I remember we got hammered with those guys. They played a couple of shows with us in Sweden somewhere. Mal, uh, Malmo? Is yeah. that a city? Yeah. Yeah, 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 BK Club or KB Club or something like that. KB, yeah, 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 KB. yeah, yeah. And those guys played some, and we fucking got here, and all we did was sing Motley Crue songs all night. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> which which is what love. you do. Yeah, you pass for love yeah. right into shout at the devil, right? <laughs> As you do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tell me about. Um, you know, I got a couple of questions. I did this thing last week with uh, my fans when I was in the intro. And I was talking about how I had just listened to the new Metallica podcast. Metallica has a podcast where they're oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. talking about, you know, early mm-hmm. days and it's, pre- it's pretty cool. It's a really, you know, it's well done. It's, you know, a little edited, a little weird, but, uh, but at one point Lars was talking about, um, Lars was talking about the, he feels that a lot of times, like the reason that people are so uh, indebted to Metallica or even just any band is that like the first time you have sex like you've got this music playing in the background he's like dude oh, so yeah. many, like there's so many people who lost their virginity to Master of Puppets right like and he's just like and so now Master of Puppets is their favorite right? even all these years later Master of Puppets yeah, is their yeah. favorite and so I've been asking you know other guests and I'm like what is the song if there was music playing the first time you had sex and lost your virginity what was the song playing Man, I I can't recall, uh, but it was probably horrible. <laughs> so it was a, it was probably a horrible song. I, I, my, mine was very very romantic, uh, a little bit <laughs> really? too drunk too drunk in uh, Slotskoga, the yeah. fantastic park that we always hung out in. Uh, sound of people walking a little bit too close. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I I, I want to say birds, but I, there were probably no birds. 
No. <laughs> no music had, whatsoever. The first time you had sex was outdoors in a park? Yes. yes wow. Yes. Sweet. With, Peter, with go my, for uh, it. Yeah. Uh, you got and some... again, uh, quoting Michael, then it was all down. Silver tongue <laughs> devil that you would different. manage to pull that off. <laughs> 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 Let's do it in the park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people walking too close and birds chirping. Oh, yeah. I remember somebody. Like, are you some, behind a yeah. like? Where are you behind a bush or something? Like, where are you doing it in a park? You know, when you're well, it's a pretty uh, uh, you're, dense uh, park. Okay, alone like yeah. that, you know, or alone like that, you kind of you lose track of everything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, this is yeah, this is a long time, right, <laughs> obviously. Right. Uh, I've been never drunk, been right? a f- might have been drunk, might have been yeah. uh, slightly intoxicated, uh, but I never. I think I never really. Music and sex, I don't know. No, I never really thought about it. You know, it's not like I, that would be. I, I want to say Barry White, you know, obviously, you know, let the music play and uh, <laughs> nice that's you know, but yeah, let's stick to that. You know, just cut for, for me, it was <laughs> super important, like, uh, like like early you when i started like moving away from home you know my my first real apartment and that stuff when when things were really exciting you know it was very important what kind of music i put on and it was yeah. uh, you know was, what would you, what uh, would you the, put on no it was like black sabbath headless cross was a classic and then uh that- I remember like ultra by depeche mode came out and that was a big big one for for um for a whole year i think that right girls that, that was, girls love depeche mode yeah, you could probably yeah. get laid like a motherfucker to Depeche Mode. But it, was, it was a good year. It was a good year. <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> is that the fir- like? Is that the first like music though that you like? The first time you had sex was there music? No, 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 it wasn't. It was something else. Like it had a party f- with, with people I didn't like at all, but I liked someone. It was like that in a, kind of in thing. a bedroom, like in the, a yeah. bedroom of the party or something. Yeah, gotcha. that kind of thing. Ooh. But. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it was a good experience. No, it wasn't. I was. I'm not proud of it at all. But it, that, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lived I in a very thinking. like. But you remember, Peter? Like, I I I moved to a school that was like we we lived in the same area when we were kids. But I moved like across a border. That means you're yeah. in a different county you know, oh, it's right, right, okay. but, which means you have to go to a different school so right, i had to go to a really posh school where everybody was like fancy dressed and everybody was super nice and i was the one like a heavy metal kid the only one and um so it, every party i went to was just to like uh, meet people and uh, yeah to find girls and uh, and eventually find one found one <laughs> but it was like yeah horrible people that i didn't care for much how, how old were you when you on this first experience it, with 17. 17. How old are you, Pete? When this happens, Peter, how old are you? Uh, are you I'd say, park? I, I guess 17-ish, something 17. like that. Yeah. Uh, 16, 17, maybe even 18, but I'm somewhere around there. Right, right. Don't, don't start too early, kids. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, no, I, uh, it was a different time, though. I think it kids started a lot earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't know, but I kept thinking about this with music and sex. I, I think that I was never really, I was too eager to put on a record, you know, so I never really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have time to kind of like, no, no that's the that, CD I, I, <laughs> must be it, you know, because like, no. I, I don't recall any, obviously I listened to lots of music, but just not then, right. you know, no. two and a half do minutes later. Do, that, obviously. do you ever do that now? Do you ever put on music but, now? Uh, no. 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 Now it's uh, you know we got three kids, right? Of course, yeah. 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 I know, right? Like, Live here. Keep it down. <laughs> yeah. You hear like feet walking by outside. You're like, well, stop. <laughs> 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 we've somehow managed. We haven't had a lock on our door this whole time either, and we've somehow lucked out like this whole time. <laughs> like at no oh, point wow. did they come in. Uh, <laughs> we've always talked about like, fuck, we got to get a lock, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, us too, but it's yeah. Uh, it would be weird to start start putting in a lock like uh, at this point, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then you get all these questions. Why do you have a lock? Oh, no reason. You know? Reasons, yeah. well, Just, you know. Yeah. Don't you want a lock? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to put it in yeah. to the kids' doors as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's not a good thing. <laughs> what do you? Uh, when do you guys hear Metallica? Speaking of Metallica, just you know, going off into that. Mm. Uh, well, that was like when I was twelve or something. 
Okay. Start listening yeah. to that. I, re- I remember having, you know, these, uh, the, the Walkmans that you had, like with the cassette. Right. Yeah. I had that in school later on. That's like a really like, a firm memory of mine that I had a, like a 90 minutes tape with uh, Master Puppets on uh, one and a half side and Garage Days on the rest of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. As much as could fit. And I always had that. And I had long hair. And as every time we were in like the, the big um, auditorium or whatever you say, when we were writing essays, you were not allowed to have music back then. These days, it's proven that it you know it can help people with you know distractions and stuff. But back then, couldn't. So I always had to sneak it in and had the headphones underneath my my t-shirts and under my hair and I always listen to that. And I always remember every time, you know, as as the second side of the cassette came on, like 10, 15 minutes in, I just realized everybody was staring at me. And I looked up and I was like, yeah. You know, it was like a, some of Lars's drumming had gotten through all the, it was like, a, and I was caught and I had to like spend the rest of the next like half hour or so just writing without music. But yeah, it was really early. <laughs> yeah. I remember for, I heard probably Master Puppets first and I, I was like, yeah, I was really, at the time I had just started like, or started listening to like, speed metal like really melodic like halloween blank guardian that kind of stuff and so when i heard like master puppets i was like ah it's just thrash you know and i was like ah and it's like riffs that go on forever and at the time i was trying to you know start to start to play guitar myself so i was like not into that i wanted to play solos and uh, uh, melodies and that kind of stuff but then uh, a friend of mine had kill them all and when we heard that, it was like, all right, now I get it. Now I get it. You know, and then he had um, tons of other like kind of thrashy. He had Exodus and he had like all, all kinds of super cool stuff. And then I was like, all right, now I get it. But I still didn't like like when Justice Raw came out. I was like, nah, you know, in 88, it was like Keeper of the Seven Keys was, was more my jam back yeah. then. But, but, um, but I grew to love it. Though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, right. but it was just something about like just what, what what you want to be as a as a guitar player and a fan uh, and a band and we wanted to be like melodic and, and just fast and and then they were playing like and i much for the same reason i never got into megadeth or stuff like that, that just because there was something about the way they played that that mm-hmm. wasn't you know for me but it's i funny. do love it but it's, it's funny uh, in context of time you know i remember yeah. when injustice came out like people didn't like it like people were no. like well it's, they're like it's good you know like it's okay yeah. you know? Yeah. i mean now everybody looks back at it and goes oh my god like fucking yeah. timeless classic one yeah. you know like the production changed you know fucking everything you know yeah but you know doing stuff like what lars does in one but a bit a bit about but a bit of, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that went on to you know yeah, your factory shit. and you know so much yeah. stuff but at the time it was like eh, uh, uh. and also kind of shows you how head, headstrong you are <laughs> where's the bass and yeah well that too <laughs> but how headstrong you are as a kid you know when you're like 15 16 17 something like that it was like you're so laser focused into what you love and what you don't like you know and, and how we put in this to you and how music should be and like oh i love this band but i hate that you know that kind of thing whereas now everything is cool you're fine with, with most things but right, right. Uh, but it was so important you know especially like starting a band it was so important to kind of have a an identity you know as a as a kid i guess and, and you kind of figure out who you want to be and who you yeah and who who you are at that point and you know and part of that is rejecting things you don't like i guess i want to say too like that time was kind of a transitional time for metal like metallica yeah. was starting to slow slayer was starting to slow down you know they put out yeah. the heaven which you know revered now as a timeless classic but at Without the a time doubt, yeah. people were kind of like slow they were calling them slower <laughs> instead <Yeah>. of slayer <laughs> And then, and then the Swedish death metal thing starts coming yeah. around about that time. And I remember yeah. hearing like Entombed at that time. I remember hearing, you know, like when I heard Left Hand Path, my fucking brain just exploded. I was like, holy yeah. fuck, this is brutal. Like yeah. a whole, I mean, that was, that must've been, I mean, did you guys see all of that coming up at that time as well? Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw like. Uh, yeah, so Nihilist came to to Gothenburg. They played one show together with Grotesque that later became At the Gates. Okay, mine, mine was blown. It was the coolest things I've ever seen. And um, 
and then, I, you know, when Entombed released their first demo, I bought it immediately, that kind of stuff. And it was super, super exciting. Um, but like Stockholm is five hours away, which is a, you know, uh, yeah, on the other side of the world, basically, when yeah, you're a I kid, mean, you know. Yeah, here, I mean, we're in the Bay Area, LA is five hours away. So like, it's yeah, fucking yeah, far. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, so we never went there, but sometimes like some of the guys would come down and party with us in the early 90s. And uh, so we got to meet all the, you know, Antum guys on the Tiamat and, and Dismember guys. And, and did, it really, really doesn't ex- really have a scene at this point, does it? Well, it's kind of starting a little yeah. bit, you know, um, and started to, like the first ones probably like grotesque. And then there were some other kind of thrash bands and stuff like that. And okay. um, then and Peter's brother, Anders, started with a ceremonial oath and that later Jesper joined. And then he got tired of that and started in flames from that. And, yeah. and Dr. Quillity started in 89. And then so we were kind of early but we were just kind of figuring things out and, and starting releasing stuff in 91 and uh, so that's how it, it started and, for us but and for me it was like i was like like you said my brother started this and, and you guys were kind of doing this i i knew them but i was doing my own thing i loved like uh, like you said halloween and our maiden and, and bon yeah. jovi and all that stuff and i listened more to that but i also always had like slayer and metallica on the side that i still love but i started playing like more like um I was listening a lot to like uh, uh, Yes and Genesis and uh, you know oh, stuff okay. like that. Uh, I was a little later with the Rush. I think Michael might even have introduced me to Rush, but oh yeah, of course, yeah. So I wanted to play more like uh, art rock. Uh, you know, I, I listened a lot to Queen Strike and uh, then Dream Theater came and amazing, and everybody wanted again back to the Walkman. You know, I always had like I had uh, When Dream and Day Unite and uh, Images of wor- Words on like two sides of my uh, 90 minutes tape. And oh, yeah. uh, listen to that all, every time I, I uh, took the bus back to uh, home from school. And so that was my area. But at the same time, I was looking into the, like what you guys were doing with, with Dark and Quality and what my brother was doing with the ceremonial. And also I knew about the Stockholm thing, but I was never really into that so much. I was more on, <laughs> on the side, kind of like a spectator. So, you know, but you guys were, you were very early from, you know, I, I was very young when you guys started, even you were only, year older than I am but still it was uh yeah we were you know, kids 89. <laughs> yeah, 89's, yeah that's that's OG yeah. shit right there yeah yeah we had no idea what we were doing but it was yeah but I think it's like um grotesque really inspired us like um Thomas Limberg from Matt Gates he lived lived like across the street from me oh, so okay. he showed and he's two years older so we had like more cassettes and demos and you know he had like black metal before it, every, anyone knew about black metal um and tons of cassettes because he had a fan scene as well that he wrote so oh. he had got tons of stuff awesome. from from everywhere which meant like oh you can listen to cool stuff you know we had a record store that sold metal but you know i didn't have money enough to, to buy all the records i wanted so copying cassettes and all that stuff became a thing you know and tape trading right. and yeah and i was all gonna that, say he was know. probably a tape trader right yeah and, so, and yeah. so was i like i i collected metallica live tapes and uh right. and demos and yeah and autopsy live tapes and everything yeah. like you can imagine uh, and demos of course um so that's that became our thing and i think that really solidified like who we felt we were you know who who you are in this not in, in it wasn't a scene but you still stood out because you didn't want to be like your parents you didn't want to be like your your friends parents like you didn't want to be part of that you wanted to be something else you know and um and kind of death metal and this kind of underground scene was the coolest thing in the world and i wanted to, so much to be a part of it that everything else kind of like fell by the wayside i was like fuck that shit i just want this and I, I, all i went to was ran out to my mailbox every day to get new demos and cassettes and uh and magazines and, and stuff like that just to to find more and new music you know um so i tape traded with people from all over the world constantly just to find music and um and of course we had to start a, a band of our, <laughs> of our own as well but right, that was right. kind of like an excuse so we can trade our demos for for other new demos so we can hear more stuff you know right i, I mean it was so important that doing that yeah. all back then you know like yeah. bootleg bootleg live shows like i we had my i had a friend i didn't actually trade but my my friend in my band traded jim yeah. and he had like a 14 page list of bootleg i mean yeah. we listened to just bootleg after bootleg just hearing you know even before i heard a demo i was hearing 
you know, entombed bootlegs and I was hearing, you know, like these, you know, horrible sounding live shows, but you'd just listen to it and be like, fuck, this is cool. That's well, the only uh, option you had. Like it, none of these bands would ever come to Sweden, I thought, you know, and right. I, I would never get to travel somewhere to see them. So, you know, this is my only shot, like a shitty cassette, like like fourth generation uh, copy of, of, a, of a, you know, little handheld recorder, but. That's all I had. And it yeah. was fantastic. I listened to it over and over again, trying to figure out how to play guitar to it and that right. kind of stuff. It was fucking amazing. Totally. I, I mean, Gary Holt, you know, Exodus was around at that time in the Bay Area, yeah. but, you know, they had, for, I don't, you know, for whatever reason, they, their rec Bonded by Blood didn't come out until like 85, which was, uh, you know, not, doesn't seem that long later, but, you know, when you think that Kill 'em All and Show No Mercy came out in 83, 85 is two years later. That's a fucking long time, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, but they had all those songs. We were, you know, we were seeing them play all the time. So we had all the bootlegs. I'm literally like we and my first band, we would learn uh, a lesson in violence and strike of the beast from bootlegs and then play it in backyard parties in the suburb <laughs> that we lived in. And like, you know, we, if, if people didn't know it wasn't our song, we were like, yeah, that's a cool song. right? <laughs> but you know, like that was like, you're right. That bootleg scene was so fucking yeah. important to like forming yeah. the music and, you know, getting it turned on. And, you know, obviously yeah. this is before the internet. And so, you know, yeah. And now you can find everything anywhere. And I mean, yeah, it's impossible to 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 explain to someone who wasn't there, and and also like yeah to explain how, actually how, how important it was to kind of really shape who you you were like a, your passion for it you know totally. and how how important it, like it became everything you know for a while and um, everything else just like didn't matter because this is it this is what we want to do this is a hundred percent focus on on music you know yeah it's I remember so I remember glorious. getting turned on to Queensrÿche by by a tape trader. Because, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, the, the, the first, the Queen's the Queen of the Reich EP. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh, good. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a good one. That I I gotta say, I still, to this day, I fucking love that band. I love Queen's yeah, me Reich too. Yeah, me too. Fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. They they did I one think... of the best. Uh, I gotta say, when, when MTV started doing these sent to be unplugged. Ooh, yeah. They did one of the best unplugged. Oh really? Uh, I don't know if ever. I saw that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man, you can, so I, now you can find it on YouTube. Obviously, okay. the quality isn't so great, but it's. I say I think I still have it. Like this is one of those uh, yeah. uh, VHS uh, tapes that I actually save. It's mm. so amazing, and they do like mm. I think they do Queen of the Reich and uh, they do uh, Lady Were Black and they do, yeah, they do yeah. a lot of the older ones and they the newer do. ones. Obviously, I've seen it so many stuff. times; it's ridiculous. Yeah, we yeah. watched it again, and it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's fantastic. Awesome. You know, that's uh, yeah. I I love that band so good. Yeah, we, my wife and I, it was, this was during the pandemic last year and, you know, we're, everybody's locked down. So we would do like a, a date night on Friday and Saturday, which, you know, yeah. having torn for, you know, not, you know, touring, I haven't been able to do that with her and kids, yeah. but our kids are older now. And so one night we got super hammered and, uh, you know, we're kicking in the garage and it's, you know, we got the candles and we put on, she's like, play, play, uh, play Operation Mindcrime. Ooh. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, cause you know, sometimes she just wants to listen to whatever. Yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, put on that. I used to like that record. And we, fuck, okay. and we, we went through that whole album top to bottom singing at the, you know, like just <laughs> really bad falsetto, like all, all night. And then we got to the end of it and she was like, play it again. That was so good. Like, so we started it over and played it again from the top. And it was, uh, it was just, it totally reminded me, not that I, had not liked that record but it just completely brought that whole you know the concept the lyrics yeah. the fucking vocal hooks the you know key, I, amazing key changes like yeah. what is it well sweet, sweet sister mary that's, yeah. that's oh still yeah, one yeah, of yeah. My, it's, it's so amazing still but it's it, I, I consider it one one of the best albums ever made and i remember like an pretty much every swede who loves them remembers this because there was only one radio channel that played rock music or metal or heavy okay. metal and I, I mean I, i've heard many stories about americans like you know they had you have their your uh, channel in, in right. la you have your right. radio station in and wherever and and like they kind of shape um, the the, totally. the the musical culture in a way and but here we have a national radio and that's it <laughs> and and there was one hour every day a week um, is that the dude from uh the doom band that did that um, nah, well, uh, uh, Leif Edling, uh, yes, the bass player yes. from Calamass, yes. he he was part of it, but he okay. came in later. But this okay. was so. This was when 
this was earlier, like uh, late eighties. And so, and so, but in this show, when he was like, Oh, I have this new band it's called Queen Strike, and they have this, uh, their second album is coming out um, or the third, but it was operation Minecraft. And he said like, well, if this band doesn't make it big, if this isn't the best thing ever, I'm going to eat my hat or something like that. <laughs> and everybody remembers hearing, hearing that. And, and, and I mean, nobody, where, who, what a metal musician you talk to in Sweden, like they heard that, that show and heard that for the first time. And they w- went out and bought that record. And then what was it like a uh, half a year later, they came supporting Metallica. On oh, Master shit. Puppets tour. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So it, it was like, yeah. So everybody has can, kind of like this, the same kind of connection to that album. And you didn't see this, Peter, but uh, Jeff Tate came to Gothenburg four or five years ago. Yeah, and oh, I okay. remember you, you called me the next day. It's like, why weren't you there? It's like, yeah, I didn't know. Nobody knew. But it yeah, was crazy. Please, and he, please, he was, please tell me about it. Tell us no, about but he, so he did this. Um, um, Un- unplugged thing like just him and oh, a couple wow. of musicians from Ireland whatever and he still does it because he plays now he does like Rage for Order he does uh, the entire operation and he did Empire here in, in Gothenburg too like two years ago but this was like kind of the first and it was just like uh, an acoustic evening with Jeff Tate and for some reason it was a nightmare booking him or booking that show somewhere in Gothenburg so the, it ended up in a like the bo- bottom floor of uh, Sticky Fingers, which is a super nice venue up top, but then there's just a bar and a tiny little stage downstairs, so nobody knew it and knew about it. We ended up being twenty people, maybe, oh, geez. in that little bar, just me and a couple of diehard Queen Strike fans, and he played for an hour and a half, hour forty five, something like wow, that. That's awesome. And he just told stories. He just sat there. He had the time of his life because he didn't have to worry about it. He just loved singing, you know. Right. And he, oh, it was glorious. It was one of the best shows, just like best show experiences I've ever had. The just being close these, to him. That's, uh, that's awesome. Oh, so good. That's killer. Were you, was you everybody, singing, was everybody singing I, along too? Everybody singing yeah, along. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. You know, and he, he played every song. Like we, we people started like requesting songs, and it was like. Do you know that guys? Okay. I have a, I have a story about it first, and then we'll get into it, and then oh, it just shit. continued. It was, oh, it was glorious. He never mentioned Queen's Rock by name, but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> In my old band, you know that kind of thing. Right, right, it was right. oh man, so cool. Love it, love it. I can't uh, I can't wait to go on the road with you guys here. Yeah, uh, likewise. Next September, <laughs> and we'll fucking we'll, we'll drink beers and fucking rock out to Queen's Rock. Yes, let's fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah, this tour is this tour is going to be killer, man. Yeah. yeah, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for letting us come with you. This is gonna yeah, be yeah, it's gonna be fantastic amazing experience for us. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a blast. It's gonna be it's yeah. gonna be fucking good time. So. With the Vikings too, it's gonna be yes. fun. I know. I'm on a Marth Halo effect, Machine yeah. Head, yeah. raging and pillaging across Europe and the UK. <sighs> yeah. It's gonna be dangerous. Hovet, <laughs> Hovet, and Stockholm, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that should be good. Anyway, guys, uh, I look forward to it. Congratulations so on uh, you know all fantastic. of the praise that you guys have been getting on your new song. Can't wait to hear the new stuff. Records dropping. Shoot, tell us when the records dropping. Well, it's a, we're trying to get it early, I think, but right now it looks as it's in August. Yeah, okay. so yeah, yeah that's cool. Just, just uh, yeah, because because it's impossible to print vinyl properly, and yes. that's why it's Fucking. been delayed because we don't want to release it without a physical product basically so right. uh, so that's what we hear like the, yeah mid early august is the early, earliest yeah. so, so that's when it's coming yeah all of the major labels have figured out that vinyl's doing well and so they've clogged up all the plants and so it's like a nine month wait for vinyl now, it is which it is. sucks you know but we managed to find like a tiny little plant in um in spain just to do singles so we're doing like okay. singles for for all cool. the the songs uh, leading up to the album release just on our uh, by ourselves oh okay. basically cool which is super cool. fun because we can design them and do, do our own thing you know and right, choose right. colors and all that stuff it's fantastic love it but but the the actual yeah album is coming out in august and, and some some yeah. singles along the way. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's yeah. going to be a four or maybe even five singles before the album drops. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. All right, yeah. The tease is real, well, guys. Thanks for being on here. Thank you. Thanks for having us, it. ladies and gentlemen. That was Peter and Michael and the mighty Halo Effect here no fucking with Rob Flynn.